In the breathtaking Nienda Valley, nestled deep within the forests of western Germany, a Neanderthal couple lived 40,000 years ago. They were the last survivors of their kind, living a simple and peaceful existence in harmony with the rugged landscape that had nurtured their ancestors for millennia. The couple knew they were the last one of their kind, a human species that had inhabited Europe for at least 300,000 years. They cherished their solitude in the Nienda Valley, yearning for the past but also accepting the inevitable fate of their dwindling population, that was being forced into extinction by a new human race that invaded Europe with advanced long-range weapons. The Neanderthals never adopted these weapons, likely because they required highly specialized skills to build and maintain. As the days turned into years, they continued to live their simple life in the Nienda Valley. They marveled at the changing seasons, and shared silent conversations with the spirits of their ancestors. Together, they embraced the inevitability of their own mortality, understanding that they were the embodiment of an ancient lineage that would soon be lost to time. Their bodies were returned to the embrace of the land they held dear, their spirits forever entwined with the Nienda Valley. And as the wind whistled through the dense forests and the rivers meandered their course, it carried with it the echoes of a vanishing species, a reminder of the indomitable spirit and resilience that once flourished in the hearts of the last Neanderthals. It was the partial skeleton of a male Neanderthal unearthed during quarrying operations in the Nienda Valley in Germany, in 1856 that was first recognized as a distinct form of human. The first proof that humans were subject to evolutionary forces, like other species was provided by this discovery. It entirely altered how we saw ourselves, and the importance of this site's rediscovery for culture cannot be overstated. Indeed, the first specimen to be identified as an early human fossil was from the Nienda Valley. The 40,000-year-old type specimen fossil of the species Homo neanderthalensis, known scientifically as Neanderthal I, was found in a cave in the Neanderthal Valley in August 1856. A skull cap, two femora, three bones from the right arm, two from the left arm, a portion of the left ilium, pieces of a scapula, and ribs made up the type specimen of the first Neanderthal skeleton from the Nienda Valley. Three years before Darwin's book on the origin of species was published the fossil was found. Scientists had never seen a specimen like it when it was found, it had an oval-shaped skull with a low, receding forehead and distinct brow ridges, as well as thick, strong bones. In fact, the original Neanderthal study marks the inception of paleoanthropology as a field of study. This specimen has played an important role ever since it was discovered, in addition to its unique historical and scientific significance. Meanwhile, the Irish anatomist William King only realized the bone's evolutionary significance a few years later. He claimed that they belonged to an early human who was biologically distinct from us. He referred to it as Neanderthal man, or Vninda Valley man. It received its name as the first fossil hominin species in 1864. However, the first Neanderthal fossil was not found in the Neanderthal Valley. Prior to the discovery of the Neanderthal fossils, their true nature and significance had not been understood, so no distinct species name had been given to them. A few years after the discovery of Neanderthal I, researchers realized that earlier fossil finds from 1829 in Belgium, and 1848 in Forbes Quarry in Gibraltar, were also Neanderthals. These two earlier finds were actually the first early human fossils ever discovered, despite the fact that they weren't acknowledged at the time. After dominating Europe for over 300,000 years, Homo neanderthalensis perished 40,000 years ago. Homo sapiens, modern humans, replaced them as they flooded the continent from the east. One of the Nienda Valley skeletal pieces has been used by scientists, to demonstrate that the original skeleton is almost exactly 40,000 years old making it a relatively recent member of the species and possibly one of the last. The Neanderthal's age at death was estimated to be between 40 and 42 and his date of death determined by radiocarbon dating, to be 39,900 plus or minus 620 years, indicating that he belonged to one of the last populations of this human species in Europe. In addition to being an advanced age, he had a grave condition that has never before been identified in a Neanderthal, a bone-eating, metastatic condition with an unidentified cause. A healed bone fracture on the frontal bone was possibly caused by a fall onto a sharp rock. Additionally, Neanderthal I clearly had a healed bleeding of a blood vessel in his brain, which is also linked to a traumatic event occurring during his lifetime. Neanderthal I also experienced severe paranasal sinus inflammation, as seen in the deformed small vessel traces that are signs of chronic inflammation in both frontal sinuses. 
the Neanderthal Valley was originally a limestone canyon widely known for its rugged scenery, waterfalls, and caves. However, quarrying during the 19th and 20th centuries removed most of the limestone and dramatically changed the shape of the valley. It was during such a quarrying operation that the bones of the original Neanderthal man were found in a cave. Neither the cave nor the cliff in which the bones were located still exist. The Neanderthal cave had already been destroyed when archaeologists went back to the quarry because it had been dynamited, excavated, bulldozed flat, and the area was transformed into parkland in the 1920s. Although other Neanderthal sites have been discovered, the first and most significant one was initially believed to be lost to science. Indeed, the precise location of the former grotto was lost until it was identified as a result of new excavations in the Ninda Valley. A total of over 20 fragments of Neanderthal bone were found beneath layers of residue, loam fillings, and limestone quarry blasting debris. Since there were already two humeruses known as of 1856, the discovery of a third humerus received special attention. If you love geography, then trust me, you've never seen a globe like this before. From their distinctive graphics to their advanced technology, you will quickly realize that mover globes are something special. Indeed, mover globes is a unique kind of world globe, and their new antique style globe is stunning. To create soothing rotations, mover globes' unique spinning globes combine power from ambient light and torque from the Earth's magnetic field. Mover globe updated the traditional world globe with patented technology. Each globe has a transparent outer shell made of high-quality acrylic that has been carefully selected. This external layer remains stationary while an internal layer spins, powered by solar cells and advanced magnets. Mover globes with world maps are especially stunning, and there are a variety of designs available, ranging from relief maps to antique maps. Mover globes take on the world globe is a fashionable option for your home or office, and each globe is handcrafted and rotates without the use of wires or batteries. Get your globe today by clicking my special link in the description. At least three other bone fragments are also present twice, and the third humerus likely represents the remains of a second, more delicately built individual, possibly a female. The specimen, known as Neanderthal II, was identified as being exactly 39,240 years old plus or minus 670 years, the same age as Neanderthal I. The cave had not previously yielded any stone tools, but Neanderthal technology was quite sophisticated. It included the Mousterian stone and bone tool industry, the ability to create fire and make adhesive birch bark tar, using throwing sticks and spears, woodworking, crafting simple clothes, and making use of medicinal plants, as well as treating severe injuries, storing food, and using various cooking techniques such as roasting, boiling and smoking. Meanwhile in France, Neanderthals buried a toddler 41,000 years ago, but the jury's still out on non-sapiens mortuary rites. Nonetheless, the evidence is building that at least some Neanderthals ritually interred their dead. Given the number of bodies found in the La Ferrisi rock shelter, seven so far, some consider it to be a Neanderthal cemetery of some sort. The bottom line is that the most parsimonious explanation for the evidence regarding the toddler is, anthropogenic deposition of the corpse, meaning that he or she had been deliberately buried around 41,000 years ago. There is no way to know if the Ninda Valley fossils had been deliberately buried because of the lack of preservation of the original site. Archaeological discoveries demonstrate that Germany had a number of Neanderthal settlements. However, the Neanderthal era abruptly came to an end 40,000 years ago. Unexpectedly, Neanderthals reached their population peak in Germany just before their population rapidly declined and they eventually went extinct, according to an analysis of the known archaeological sites in Germany. Some have speculated that there was a link between the Campanian Ignimbrite megavolcanic eruption in southern Italy, and the extinction of Neanderthals in Europe. In fact, the most recent radiocarbon and Argonargon dating results for the eruption are 39,220 to 30, 9,705 calendar years ago. This is the identical date of the Neanderthal Valley fossils. Carbon dating is used now for almost everything old that scientists want to date. It is taken as fact and used as evidence to gather information on the ancient world. However, carbon dating is at best a good theory, and that is all it is, a theory. By about 58,000 years, after an organism has died, there's so little radioactive carbon left that calculations of age are no longer accurate. That's why radiocarbon dating is only reliable for samples up to 50,000 years old. 
Because animals and plants stop absorbing carbon-14 when they decay, the radioactivity of the carbon-14 that's left behind reveals their age. But there's a catch. Low amounts of organic material, the diet of the dead person or animal, and contamination with modern samples can skew the calculation. Indeed, revised radiocarbon dates on the Neanderthals from caves in Belgium demonstrate that they disappeared from northwest Europe at 44,200 to 40,600 years ago. However, older tests that suggested more recent dates were found to be contaminated. Scientists suspected that collagen containing animal glue might have been used to consolidate the bone, since this preservation method was common for bones excavated in the 19th century. The chemical composition of animal glue would be identical to the original collagen, and therefore remain undetected during the radiocarbon dating. Chronological and stratigraphic evidence from several sites in northwest Europe has hinted at a gap of around 4,000 years. This is between 42,000 to 38,000 years ago, marking the late Neanderthal and the earliest dated modern human settlements. Furthermore, recent work at more than 40 archaeological sites has established that stone tool industries linked with the Neanderthals in Europe end, by 41,000 to 39,000 calibrated years ago. Direct dating of Neanderthal remains, however, has produced a series of results that span this gap, suggesting a late surviving Neanderthal population that could be associated with so-called the transitional or hybrid tool industry during this time. Nonetheless, it is still unknown precisely why the species went extinct. Perhaps it was an example of failed evolution or the emergence of Homo sapiens. However, it is difficult to believe that they were pacifists who just went off to a cave to die without a fight, while their women and children shivered and starved. Scientists will keep thinking about this issue, but the lessons of the Ninda Valley are not yet finished. Neanderthals were genetically distinct from anatomically modern humans, according to DNA evidence. The oldest potential Neanderthal bones date to 430,000 years ago, but the classification remains uncertain. However, it is unclear when the line of Neanderthals split from that of modern humans. DNA studies have produced various intervals ranging from 500,000 to more than 800,000 years ago. In other words, contrary to what was once believed, Neanderthals were not our direct ancestors but rather distant biological cousins. In fact, DNA from the original Ninda Valley skeleton provided critical evidence in support of this theory. Unfortunately, DNA, an unstable molecule that degrades over time, is not found in every Neanderthal fossil. In other words, there is a limited supply of Neanderthal DNA.